Join with me today is a best-selling author of the book, The Pillar Bees, uh, Ray Santiago III. I am so excited to have you here today. Uh, Ray and I met back in October, November of last year, and I had the privilege of supporting Ray uh, from a marketing perspective with his book launch. So I can't wait to get into all the things we did. But first, Ray, I just want to welcome you and just thank you. I'm so grateful to have you here with us today. Well, thanks for having me. Um, you were a big part of my the last six of six months of my life. So we saw you sometimes more than my wife uh, and how you held my hand through the book launch process. So um, yeah, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I had such a great time. I mean, just working with you was amazing. You were so patient, but you always had like just so many great ideas. And I think we made a great team. So I can't wait to dive into all the things. But before we get started, will you just tell us a little bit more about your business today? Sure. So I'm a sports psychology consultant. I work with mostly high school athletes and then often follow them up through the college and the professional ranks if they're that fortunate to reach that level. So um, that's what I do for work. Uh, but what I really do is teach life skills development through the medium of sport. If it was just about sport, you know, I wouldn't really care that much because most athletes careers are, if you're fortunate, are over by 22. It's what you do with the rest of your life that matters to me. So um, whether it's teaching someone how to have confidence when they don't have it, how to have emotional control when they desire it, um, how to not allow the world to impact them, but they can impact the world through the difference of a mindset. And that's what I care about. So um, it's a pretty cool opportunity. And, and the book that uh, you, Patty, helped me uh, put out to the world, it's kind of my calling card. That's how I do my business. It's my philosophy and my heart on pages. So thank you for helping me with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I just love working with authors like yourself because you guys really care. Um, you know, you write books because you want to change lives. And um, I know you just take this so personally and just really pour your heart out into your words. Um, while we're just talking about the Pillar Bees, will, will you tell us a little bit more about who it's for? Sure, yeah. Um, I think the ideal client would be a ninth or 10th grader. I read it, I wrote it, here comes the author. I wrote it for with the sixth grade kind of in mind as far as how to understand the book, uh, understand the concept. So there's nothing in there that's like way over someone's head. Um, but in my mind, I'd rather be prepared than have to repair later. So for the reader who reads this book, they can understand what's coming ahead and how the mind works, how the body works with the mind, so that when things happen, they're like, oh, I read this in Ray's book that this is going to happen. This is how I'm going to feel and this is how I'm going to respond. And just teaching athletes um, how to respond well and how to control themselves in light of what's happening around them. So that's kind of the, the heart of it. And so... But what's interesting is I've had CEOs of companies call me or, and, and reach out, whether it's in LinkedIn, and say, um, this is one of the best self-help books I've read. And even the readers I had, my pre-readers, most of them were not athletes. Most of them were parents of athletes and who said, wow, this was super helpful, not only for my kid and helping me understand them, but um, for my own life. So, you know, performance is performance and the mind is the mind, whether you're an athlete or whether you're a person. How do you and I both have your very worries, doubts, um, almost every day. Yeah, actually every day. And so it's like, okay, it, I don't have to be an athlete to benefit from this book. I can be a, just a performer in life and we all are that. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, it's funny. I remember us having a conversation about this, I think back in December about how the, you know, I think at some point you could have, you know, pillar Bs for managers and the pillar Bs for coaches, you know, I think all of these offshoots of the main book, there's definitely some opportunity there. So that's really exciting. Uh, you know, one step at a time, we just launched in March of this year. So <laughs> yeah, yep. it's definitely a skeletal model for, for several editions to come, but it took me three years to make that. And, um, you know, if you're an author, you understand how long it takes because it's, it's not just the book. It's does this, does every sentence need to be here? Um, yeah. If you're an author that cares, it's how do I get my reader to read the next sentence? 
That's all we're ever trying to do because it could be a dog that needs to be let out for a bathroom. It could be a phone call. It could be a text and someone could put down your book and never pick it up again. So it's how do I write this book so succinctly yet so powerfully that every sentence pops to the point where it's like, you know what? The dog, it can wait or that text. I can answer it later because I'm so glued to this book right now. So that's the heart. And every time I got went to the keyboard to uh, type and to work on this. There were days where I worked for eight hours, woke up the next day, looked at it and said, this is trash. And I threw it out. I still became a better writer. That stuff didn't make the book, but it's that important as a author to, can I make my reader read the next sentence by putting this sentence here? So let's get into your book launch a little bit. So we did uh, a lot of things. We built uh, several funnels for you. We did things like a free chapter share um, that you can still use today to try to attract readers and get people interested in the book. We launched an advanced reader campaign, um, again, just to help with uh, getting you to that best-selling status before the book even launched. And we hit bestseller in three categories for you. Um, the other uh, objective behind that also is to try to gather early reviews um, so that when the book launches, you've got a pool of people who pre-read the book and can go in and write a review. Um, of course, we had your book sales funnel and we did something really cool for you. And I often talk about how, you know, ROI from book sales, they're really just not that high, especially when your book just priced for $16, $17. I think you have to sell something like 300 books. <laughs> well, and that's like $5,000 in sales, but that's not necessarily what you get after either the publisher or Amazon, right? Because they're going to take their cut. So, you know, you have to sell tens of thousands of books, right? If you want to just retire from book sales alone, it's really, <laughs> really hard to do. <laughs> but what you did is we created, as part of your book funnel, once people opted in after purchasing your book, we then sent them to a special invitation to attend a workshop. Will you tell us more about that and, and how that worked for you? Sure. So one of the reasons that I, I'm so appreciative to you was like, I can have these ideas in my head, but unless you have someone on the back end putting it all into fruition, bringing it to life, like it's just an idea. So that's where I, I found such great value with you. And not only that, but we had a whole different idea. And then mid launch or not necessarily launch, but like probably January, I said, Hey, I want to go a different direction. And you're like, okay, well, we have this idea, but let's roll with this. So that's something that I appreciate you being flexible with. But yes, uh, so the book sales have been okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more than what most people do in a whole lifetime of the book. We did in a week, which like you said, we're like, we're thankful for that. That was great. Um, but it's what happens after that. How do you capture someone's email and then have them become a raving fan? But what we did as well is we created a free event. Um, and from that free event, I made 10 grand. And so think about, yes, it was the book that kind of drew them in. But then it's like, oh, this other opportunity. And then um, I sold them to a, a program later on, which I now run called the Inner Coach Club. And so what the book will do for you, it will definitely, it's a great business card. It will open doors. But what I think, Patty, your specialty is, is you have such a mind for the entrepreneur of like, this could be so much more. And I think that's what you helped me with, with also my other mentor who's teaching me things. And, and together we collaborated and make everything come to life. And, you know, I've told you this before, but my mentor says, usually someone, when I teach them this, it takes them three, three months to build what you built in like two weeks for me and looked phenomenal. And I got his stamp of approval. And so, um, you know, I'm not afraid to toot your horn and, and your genius and your ability to just bring this stuff to life and help your authors in any way that they feel like, hey, like what, like I have this idea and you just help flush it out. So thank you for helping with that. And and not only that, but it's a recurring. I have one coming up on May 21st, another event to where the funnel that you built for me, it's evergreen. So you just change the date and then it just it's the same thing. So um, working with you is helpful, but then you give us the tools and you have the the tech side um, support to like help us kind of run it ourselves afterwards or hire somebody, a VA or something to run it for us that we can focus on, whether it's writing a new book or coming up with better content. So uh, hope that answers that question. 
Yeah, it did. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so what is one of the most important things you learned during your, your book launch? Um, I think having a plan and just executing the plan step by step is super important and not trying to jump ahead or think about having expectations. I think having expectations is, it can be nice, but it can also be misleading. So what I do for a living is teach somebody how to believe themselves one moment at a time. And we're not trying to have some crazy end result. And so what we did every day, my mind would want to jump ahead to like this or that. But we just, every day, we just plugged along. And the coolest part is, and what I've shared with you before, three days before my book launch, if I would have done this alone, it would have been like hectic. Okay, here, how do I do all this stuff? Three days before my book launch, I was, everything was good. Everything was done. Everything was automated. And I just got to spend time with my fam family for three days. And then the book launched and everyone's like, well, what are we supposed to do? What, like, what, what are, and I just said, we just enjoy this adult beverage and hang out together because I'm not doing an Instagram live. I'm not doing that. I just, I'm choosing just to be with my family. So I think that was the biggest thing I learned is when you have the proper tools and people in your corner in place, it goes very smooth or it goes as smooth as, as possible. Yeah, the work was already done. And that's actually a really common thing I hear from my clients is like, okay, now what? I'm like, we did all the hard work. Everything's in place. It's set. It's going. Like Those three, four months we've been working together, we put all, all that time in. So we just get to relax. So I love that. I also like how you talked about having a strategy. Uh, I think that a lot of times what authors do is they'll Put their book on amazon and then you know i'll often hear well i didn't sell any books and i said well did you have a plan on how you were going to sell books and listen you don't have to have like a 50 page powerpoint <laughs> business plan but definitely a strategy as far as here's what we're going to do to build excitement here's how we're going to try to sell books here's how we're going to identify readers now make money with our book and then continue to just promote the book past launch just having some kind of plan in place and like you said, we even pivoted a little on that uh, one-time offer. Uh, and it's okay. Yeah, you, you can pivot. It happens all the time, right? And the great thing too, especially today in the digital world, you know, if, if something doesn't seem to work out, it's so easy now to like just mm -hmm. go in and make a few tweaks and, and, and some changes here and there. You don't have to, usually you don't have to scrap the whole thing and start from scratch. Sometimes you can make just minor changes. So what do you think some of the biggest challenges authors might face today? Well, it's not writing the book <laughs> because <laughs> even if it takes three or four years, it's something that you want to do. I really do think that, especially depending on the age, I'm not trying to throw a certain age group under the bus, but if someone's someone between 40 and 65 writing a book and you have no idea how to do the technology side, it's so intimidating. So you can have this great book on the shelf, and if you don't know how to put it out there, something like I don't even know how to put it on Amazon or any of that. So I think it's less writing the book and more what comes afterwards in the preparation to launch and not having the plan, not having the tools, not having the, the people on your team, so to speak, to help you get through that stuff. So it's not the writing piece. It's what comes afterwards. But that, that becomes this huge fear of like, I don't know what a landing page is. I don't know what uh, automation is. And so I think that's something that you not only did, but you kind of walked through of like, here's here's why we would do this. Here's, here's the value of this. And like we talked about, like you kind of share, like here's what typically works, but if it's not your style, if it's not you, then we pivot. And I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe that's one of your stubborn clients, but I'm like, I kind of knew exactly who my clientele was and, because I have an interesting clientele, I have mm -hmm. parents who are likely buying this for their kids. So yeah. I wasn't like directly to the the uh, athlete. It was more like to their parents. So there's a, like almost an extra step where there's just a little bit more complication involved. Whereas most authors are like they can speak right to their their client who's going to listen. But you know, high school athletes don't really listen, nor do they read too much unless it's really interesting. So, but um, that's yeah. the hardest part. It's just getting it out there. Once it's there, bringing it to life. Yeah. And one of the great things too, for authors who have books and, you know, they didn't have a strategy or put a book funnel together. The great thing is that 
you can still do a book funnel. It's not too late. You can still build mm-hmm. one at any time. And I think what's really great too, and Ray, maybe even at your six month mark or your one year anniversary, you know, it's kind of fun because you can bring back some relaunch bonuses or just, you know, you're putting emphasis on the book. You just want to, you know, drive extra awareness for it. It's been six months. It's been a year. And yeah, offer some new bonuses and you can have them available for a limited time. Maybe it's, you know, I mean, who knows? It could be anything. Maybe it's even an in-person event at, at some point, you know, for anybody, you know, local near you. Um, and then you can take those down. So you can bring them back, bring them up, pull them back and really just have some fun with it and, and do promotions. Cause I say this all the time and it's Mike McCallowitz, I believe is the one who said it first, but once you have a book, you're always marketing your book. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And when you market it, it sells. And when you don't market it, it doesn't sell. So don't be surprised. So someone told me you got to market that thing like you're running for president for about three years. <laughs> for about three years, they say you should do it. So I haven't been doing that because I've got a family and <laughs> another part of my business that's the focus. But uh, yeah, when you when you market it, it sells. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, as we're wrapping up here, I do have a question for you. Do you recall the last book you read and do you remember how you heard about that book? Well, I mean, I just got a couple of books that I started reading today. Actually, I'm sitting right here with it. It's uh, so I was watching, I was watching ESPN so, <laughs> and that's how I heard about it. And I love the Yankees and I love the guy who wrote it. So I don't know if that's meets your criteria. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> was ESPN, were they interviewing the author on there or were, oh, they were. Yep. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think that's an important thing to remember, you know, right. As you know, we can't all get on ESPN, but just doing podcasting like you are now, that's a stage. There's so many ways to get on stages. You know, I just got a notification from clubhouse the other mm-hmm. day. I, clubhouse is still around, you know, that's a stage. <laughs> So just continuing to do, you know, whether it's IG lives, you know, being a guest on other people's podcasts, maybe it's starting your own podcast, YouTube, short video, you know, those are still great ways just to get in front of other people's audiences or just reach new audiences. So uh, yeah, that's excellent. Ray, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciated everything that you shared with us. Yeah. Glad to do it. Thank you, Patty, for your time.